Woodford Green, and, and I'm with uh, Jeff. Is no, is it Stumkey? Stumkey. Yeah. Stumkey. Um, so I, and I never know because I've seen it written down thousands of times. Uh, it's been anglicised. Yeah. Well, and I never know quite know to pronounce it. And of course, it was a. It's a name that that that's, that that I'm very familiar with, but yeah. never really knew to pronounce it. It's a Stumkey. So at least for the record, I know that. Yeah. And. Uh, so, but I'm with Jeff, uh, and I'm really here uh, to talk about uh, his father, Eddie Stompy, um, who was a prolific speed skater in the late 20s and 30s. Um, and I know that, that Jeff has done a lot of work uh, on that background. Um, and of course, he, he went into hockey, as did Jeff himself. But if we can just talk about, uh, about Eddie, as we'll call him. But yeah. his name wasn't Eddie, it was Edgar. Edgar. Water. Edgar Walter Stonkey. Always known as Eddie. Always known as Eddie, yeah. And and um, so where was he born? Walthamstow, 1905. Okay. Uh, and so did he always live in that area? He lived in Walthamstow from 1905 to 1914. Then they moved to Tottenham, where the Stonkey family lived right through to the Second World War. Okay. Okay. So he always lived in the North London area of the uh, of London. Yeah. So, uh, how did he get into roller skating? He started playing football. Uh, played London League football for Walthamstow Grange, which is a local team, a rival to Walthamstow Avenue. Um, so a friend took him up to at the palace, and he just loved it. But he was, he was in his mid-twenties by the time he started skating. Oh, really? So he yeah. he was, I think he was about 19, I think like 1905. I think he was... About 23, when he started skating. So I don't think he skated before that. Was he always sporty? He played football um, a lot, loved it, um, cycled a lot, um, just for, partly for recreation, partly to get around. Um, yeah, he was. I mean, he had, uh, one of his brothers was a very good tennis player. Um, um, had a cousin that uh, represented. Uh, Played, played uh, football for half a town and did quite well there. You know, it's got a fair sporting heritage in, in that era. I mean, it's not, not so easy as it is now. You know? Yeah, sure. Yeah. So, and I suppose growing up in them sort of times. So, yeah, I mean, so if he was in his 20s, so he'd, he'd have gone through the First World War then. Um, he got through the First World War because he was too young. Yeah. I mean, the First World War kicked off when he was um, about 10, 9 or 10, and finished when he was sort of mid-teens. Mm. So he wasn't, so he didn't quite get snatched up, you know. His yeah, yeah. brother was taken into the First World War and got badly wounded. I mean, survived, but um, took a shell, splinter, right. in the right arm. Um, but uh, no, he missed the First World War. Was it a big family then, his family? Or your family? Oh, there was like seven of them. Um, three boys, is right, um, Tom, Mick, Eddie, oh, four boys, um, and uh, Bert, Albert, and the si sisters were Edie, Florence who died as a child, you know, mm -hmm. diphtheria, um, Lily, Margaret, and they were spread out between that 1995 to 1914. Okay, the, so he was sort of in the middle of it. Yeah, uh, yeah. Okay. okay, so see, just going back to the skating. So you, you, you say that he, I, I take it, he went to the palace rink, was it? Yeah, it was. It yeah. was the local rink. Yeah. Yeah, and he just decided that he went up there. And he just loved it and just kept going. Okay. And he tossed around, and about six months after he started doing that, I saw a man came over to him and said, would you like to join the club? And it was just, uh, turned out to be Bert Lamb, who was the oh, secretary yeah. of uh, yeah. Palace Club. Yeah. And apparently he used to sort of um, talent, talent spot for, for Palace, just watching skaters, you know. Um, about and he joined, and uh, I think he started there about 1927, 28, and I think his first races were late in, late 28. And, um, yeah, yeah, because I, I think he, he must have been very good, very quickly, um, because I think he, I think he placed in, in sort of like the, the late twenties. So, and did he? Um, I take it then. He so he joined the Palace Club. Yeah. And 
And did he always race? He always raced for the Palace Club, did he? Never raced for anybody else. I mean, he, was a, he was a one club man. Uh, effectively, I was as well. Yeah. Except the, the club sort of disappeared under me, and I continued with the, you know, the flotsam of the club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, well, it, it, I, I mean, I go down that in nineteen twenty-eight. I think he uh, uh, he won a, a handicap off sixty-five yards. I think ahead of Jimmy Reed. Um, was that at Brixton? No, it was at the Palace. Oh, it was at the right. Palace. That's the that's the yeah, that's yeah. the earliest win that I've got recorded. It's probably about. That sounds right. I, I have no idea if that's his yeah. first win, yeah. but it's only the one that I've got. But he did have a quite an illustrious speed career um, throughout the thirties. Um, and I don't know if you know this, but I know you you obviously know that he won eight relay titles, yeah. um, and th that was equalled by. Uh, the great Les Woodley, Les Woodley, mm -hmm. uh, uh, a guy in the uh, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, in the sixties, but it was uh, the actual the actual feat was only um, beaten in two thousand seventeen right. by a guy called Vincent Henry, who won his ninth title. Mm -hmm. So that that record of eight relay titles is uh, it stood for nearly eighty years. Mm -hmm. um, but he missed out. Yeah, he would have won nine consecutively. Got disqualified, didn't he? I know. Yeah. So is that what happened? Nineteen thirty-six. Do you know much about that? I race? don't know why they got disqualified. They they did, and I don't think they're even down as having second. Which no, is, they didn't. Yeah. So they, I think there's only two teams in the final. Yeah. Well, yeah, but I don't think they were awarded the uh, second place. You know. Um, oh right. Yes. Yeah, yes. I see what yeah, you're saying. Yeah. 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 Um, but. I mean, like that. If had they won that, it'd have been nine in a row, yeah. which in itself would have been a would have been a record. So, he, he, nineteen thirty-two was when he won his first British title, the, the half mile. Yeah, yeah. Um, half mile being like the shortest event yeah. for 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 at the time. But so he was obviously quick. Was it a surprise though that he won? Do you think? I think he put a, he put a huge amount of effort into his start. He reckoned he could beat anybody to the first bend. Right. And I say surprise, it depends on the other guys, but yeah. um, um, who was up against Wilkie Wilkinson, who was um, an established skater from uh, either All Blacks or Cricklewood, depending on the timing. Um, mm -hmm. Joe, Joe Weatherburn, mm -hmm. who was, I think, beginning to fade. Um, Spry? Yes, um, yeah. Uh, Jack Spry, yeah. Hardy, who was another. And of course, the other guys from the club. I mean, mm. uh, so they, they must have known how good each were. I mean, Jimmy Reed and uh, Bill Ross must have known. Yeah, you know, the dad must have known roughly how they all stood. And they were, I think, they were the principal competition, all from one club. Were they? I mean, they, they, although they all skated for the club, and I think like the likes of Jimmy Reed um, was a was a one club man. I think back then, I think it was pretty much that. I know some jumped around, but. The majority stayed with one club, but were they? Would you say they were like the best of pals, or or were they just acquaintances that were up against each other? How did the club I think see with the speed skating? I think they were guys in the same club. There, there were people that were friendly with each other. In, the, in 19, I think it's nineteen thirty relay. Mm -hmm. One of the other guys was um, Bert Martin, mm -hmm. who was my dad's childhood friend. And they joined together. They got, they got head hunted at the same time. Okay. Uh, but but I think I think won the league league uh, I think won the league cup as well actually. Um, mm. But um, they were friendly. Um, but Deb was friendly. They were very friendly with Bill Ross. Mm. I don't think gone particularly well with uh, Jimmy Reed. You know, I think there was some some antipathy there. I mean, it wasn't anything really bad. But you know, I think they didn't really get on. I, I it's just exploring that one a little bit because I I know I I did this. Going back some years now, I I, I interviewed uh, Gladys Byrne, who was Jimmy Reed's daughter, yeah. very similarly to, to, to you talking about her dad. Um, sadly, Gladys is, is not with us anymore, but um, but she described him as a sort of a no nonsense guy, quite quiet, but but a no nonsense guy. Um, I sort of I, I, how would you describe your dad? Because it sounds like he was of a similar character trait that he, he took no. He was totally relentless, but he was good humoured. Right, okay. I would describe Jimmy. I, uh, if you, they were horsing around, i.e., you got an arm lock on somebody, mm. most of them would let let go. Jimmy wouldn't. Jimmy would actually you know, take it right through, and it, it, would, it really hurt 
whoever was doing it to, you know, and you know, get an arm lock on somebody, he would uh, just press it on, clearly oblivious of what was happening to his victim, you know. Um, yeah. I think it's basic there, they're okay, you know. I mean, but I mean, they got on very well with um, Bill Ross and, and Dan Howard, I think, yes. Um, lots of other guys that. I mean, really, his um, best mates it ended up in uh, from the hockey team in the end. I mean, the Newbury brothers and people, um, people like that, Dennis Arthurs. Um. And you, you spoke about uh, earlier, just before we were, we were on camera, but you, you were talking about the um, in the early 30s about the four relay guys who won, I think, at Leicester, yeah. that they were all unemployed. Yeah. Do you want to expand on that a little bit? What, what would you well, that? But that was a um, started off in building trades. No, sorry, with Gestetner in Tottenham, and then building trades. But being in the twenties and thirties, I mean, you just, you lost your job one after the other. One of his um, mates was um, heard boasting in a pub that he got a job for I don't know. I make out the figure now, but ten pence, ten ten old pence an hour. And, only to find that somebody was listening to him went out and offered himself to the same employer for nine pence an hour. So it was a bit like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, he ended up as a French polisher, um, which he loathed. Um, <laughs> and he got the opportunity, as, as a builder, he got the opportunity to do some French polishing as part of the job and he subbed it out, you know, he wanted to do it himself. But um, he was working on pianos, you know, to play our pianos, um, uh, for Christmas and every single member of the, the staff was laid off except the foreman and him and then six months later the, 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 the firm collapsed so he was then thrown back on family um, in those days I think your family was supposed to look after you you know what I mean so he went to work for his dad for his keep so that's yeah the, mm. I mean it was that bad that uh, they couldn't eat the house um, to keep warm you put newspaper between the the, 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 the bed clothes, yeah. and the more insulation. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, it was very, very hard, I think. Um, not helped by the fact his mum was dying of cancer, you know, so. Okay, uh, I didn't realise. Yeah. yeah, so, uh, I mean, we think we've got harsh times ahead of us here, but I suppose you can't really compare when you think back, like, you know, maybe 90 yeah. years ago. Well, yeah, at least, I mean, I've, the heating is on here at the moment. Yeah, um, it's not yeah. that warm, but um, yeah. it's warm enough. You know, yeah. um, it just didn't have any heat. It, yeah, but I can in my own childhood we didn't have heat. Yeah, so because the house didn't have, yeah, had no central heating. You know, this is not this house. It's um, parents' house is just down the road from here, but um, there was no central. There was no central heating. The only heat you got was from a fireplace in the main living room. So, so the four guys that that went to Leicester, so they were out of work. They they, I suppose initially, then they couldn't have competed, but they, they got a, a bit of a handout from Sid Cole, was it? Sid Cole bought the tickets. I think he got tickets, and that was how they got there. Um, there are, I think, um, the Skaters Cavalcade book. Um, come across that? Uh, no, I haven't. Oh, oh okay. Um, I think they're talking people like Pete, uh, Pete Waters and so on, talking of driving up there. Um, Ended up in a ditch and things like this, but um, it was quite a difficult journey in those days. Um, to mean, Leicester, yeah. To the well, most ways didn't exist for starters. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, but they got there and did their stuff. I think the dad went over actually in the in the um, final, but I th he was the he was the club captain at the time. I think he organised it that there was. Oh, I imagine that every team were to do this. Mm -hmm. You've got somebody tracking it, so that you could, if anything went wrong. You could really jump in, you know, jump in and just slap him around the head and, you know, mm, off, you go. Yeah, off you go, you know, and, and I think Dan Howe did that, um, jumped in just in time to avert a, it was, it was, might be an all good chance, thing. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, back in the, in the early days, yeah, it probably would have been all good chance. All good chance, they were struggling because they, I, I think, they only produced three guys that were actually current speed skaters and had to bring in Thompson from... Yeah, did a, did a lap for them. Yeah. Yeah. They, they had to run on three. That's uh, what it'd be Weatherburn um, Spry. Lerwell? Yeah. Could, could, uh, Lerwell could possibly. Yeah, yeah. yeah, could have been. Um, okay. So, 
um, he was when he won his first British title, the half mile. Yeah. A month later, just a few weeks later, he won the five mile. I mean, they never won it once, but would, like, would he consider himself a distance skater even still? I don't think there's. He might know better than me, but. Um, I don't think there's much difference between a sprinter and a distance skater in, in either cycling or huh. or skating. If yeah. you're there at the finish, yeah, and you've got a bit of turn of speed, yeah, you? yeah. But um, the five mile, the actually, it's a big game the palace, wasn't it? Um, yeah. They noticed that the, um, the, the the powder they put down to give adhesion, um, it was just rolling off the rink, and they thought, this, I won't be able to overtake anyone." Yeah, not not. Not like, I won't be able to sprint past somebody. Mm -hmm. I'm going to leave from the start. They, they, he almost did that. I mean, somebody did get in front of him, but he got round them. And the last length, the last um, straight, was a full bloody rush for the, the, the line by him and Jimmy Reed. And it's the, the throwing to feet first forward uh, uh, that won the race for him. Um, he went down these four. Uh, it was a giant leap. Well, I don't think it really was. I think just throwing himself backwards and the skates shot out in front and crossed the line first. Yeah, because his feet across the line first. It did, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Skating there across the line first. Yeah, skating. Yeah. Yeah. Is that something that, so is that something he perfected? Is that something he, he you know, he obviously consciously did it. He worked on it. I don't yeah. know if he actually did it in training because that would be quite painful doing yeah, it too yeah, many yeah. times. But yeah. I think that, that was in back of his mind. That's how he might finish. Um, he did a similar finish in the the, the um, Prince George exhibition race um, for the same reason. I mean, his game is neck and neck with Jimmy Reed. And did it there, so it can't come as a surprise to Jimmy Reed, you know. But um, Jimmy came around the outside on the last bend. I think slewed a bit, and I think that more or less did for him anyway. You know, but um, it was very very close. Mm -hmm. I think they had something like Joe Weatherburn on his hands and knees looking at the line, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. who was going to win. Tell me about that, that Prince George event, because like I said, I've got a, a medal. Um, I, I've seen your medal, your dad's medal um, from that event, and, and I've got Jimmy Reed's medal from, from the same event. So how did that come about? I think it was uh, Prince George was doing a sort of tour, of a royal tour of North London. I think he went on to, to other things, you know, I, mean, I think he just, he wasn't just going to the skating, I think there was a newspaper article about it somewhere, but, okay. um, um, but I think he was doing a tour of uh, North London and this was sort of a, a highlight or a low light of the, of the, uh, the event, um, I'm not sure how it came about, I think it was just a, an organ, yeah, something that was organised by the, um, well, I can't imagine it's a palace club, but I imagine it's the, uh, whoever managed uh, Prince George's uh, diary for him. You know? Yeah, his affairs. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I was aware that. I mean, I didn't know a lot about Prince George until until I actually Googled and researched. I was trying to work out who, who, who Prince George was in actual fact, but he was he was obviously a, a brother to the then uh, or to the to what would become the, the king. Yeah. yeah. So and uh, yeah. So um, but when he. When he won the the half mile again, he won it the following year. So he won it three years in a row. Thirty, so he won thirty two, thirty three, and thirty four. So he won four British titles in in total: three half miles yeah. and, and a five mile. But there's a story, and I remember we spoke about this briefly um, about about your work, the cup, the trophy, and George Lord. Do you, yeah. you want to just tell me yeah. what well, you know? And the story and I've got from my dad, yeah, um, mm -hmm. is obviously it's hearsay. Um, but my dad always reckoned that George Law had promised him before the the, the, the third race, the Humbake um, event, that if he won it, um, the, um, he, would, he, would, he would be given a uh, replica of the Illworthy Cup. Um, it didn't happen, and not only that, George Law denied ever, ever, ever having said it. Um, but that really, I mean, well, if you did that to my dad, that was it for life, you know. That's why he wouldn't take the um, aeroplane air, back with him when he even was ill. From, from uh, he preferred to go back with his mates on the, the England team by train, you know. So it really did rankle. Rankle, yeah. yeah. So he was quite a principled guy, you know, your dad then. Yeah, that, that sort of thing. Yeah. 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 So he firmly believed that that he would get a replica of the trophy. And he did. I mean, 
speaking now totally with you know, the cost of creating a mm. replica, if it was in the if the original was in silver, employing a silversmith and the silver would have been inordinate. But that was apparently what it was promised. So, yeah. you know, and yeah. I just go with my dad on that one. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We obviously, well, like you say, you obviously believe that. Yeah. yeah. Um, interestingly, though, that because he was a real prolific skater in the early thirties, and um, but he, he missed eight on the mile championship. For, uh, Five times, five well. times, yeah. yeah. He was second, third, second, then. Yeah. I think it's a unique uh, set of stats. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he placed. Yeah, five years in a row, he he placed. So between between nineteen thirty and and uh, and thirty four, he he placed in in the mile event. Um, do you think it was a regret that he never won that? Did he? That's never expressed any great regrets. I mean, the only thing that really got to him as George Lord um, other than that I mean no I mean I think probably would have loved to have won the mile as well um, I think on one of the miles I think um, Dan Howard pipped him didn't he I think um, and he thought, it was, he thought it was Bill Ross going I mean Dan smoked actually okay uh, up until I can just about remember him smoking in the late 40s and he was suffering from a smoker's cough which he blamed I mean, this other guy in, in Palace Colours came alongside him. He, all he could say is, go on, Bill. And it wasn't Bill, it was Dan, Dan Howard. But, um, um, I don't think it blighted his life. I mean, so, yeah, it's right. uh, but interesting you say, go on, Bill. Would, if, it wasn't, if he thought it was Dan Howard, would he have raced him to the line? I think he was trying to race him to the line anyway. But, was, uh, yeah. no, I don't think, uh, I didn't gave up. It's just that he, I think he run his race and, uh, right, okay. and uh, there's nothing left you know um, I mean one other race I think he failed to finish because he had a bad fall um, um, no I don't really know I mean it's mm. um, I mean Rumi saying to me you know it's Bill Bill Ross who thought was overtaking him and mm. obviously soon realised he wasn't but, mm. uh, okay and because in, in when I was competing we, we sort of we raced and uh, I think times had changed. And it, like in, I mean, I started racing really in the early eighties, um, and we were very much a club that we raced for each other. Mm. It was very much a, a team mm. sport. In as much as you know, we, we would work. To, we would mm. choose who was going to win, and we would work to, mm. to do that. Um, but it sounds very much like certainly in the the thirties, certainly in in the early you know in the early thirties and and in the lead up to the war that. There was very much each man for himself. I think it probably was. I mean, obviously, some skaters liked each other, some didn't. You know, um, mm. I don't think my dad begrudged Bill his uh, success in Europe. Yeah, um, but he's actually already moving towards hockey. Well, then, you know, so um, I mean, he didn't actually enter the half mile again after the, you know, the, this incident. Uh, Oh really? No. Oh, he didn't enter the half after thirty. Not the race. Not the not the cha he, he, ra he raced half miles, and beat everybody else, but he didn't race in the, the half championship. Mile championship no. I didn't real. I didn't realise that. So it, he didn't go to Germany in thirty six. So Britain's first time they sent somebody to a European championship was thirty six in Stuttgart. But your dad didn't no. didn't go. And, and was there a reason behind that or? Other than non selection, and um, but don't forget, my dad is the beginning to move away from. I mean, his career back end of the 30s was probably doing a few individual events for fun in inverted commas, and secondly, uh, being part of the relay team. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've noticed that, um, ahead of a relay championship, the dad's name never appears the day before in a hockey team. He, he dropped. Uh, they, obviously, the club dropped him from hockey, so he didn't get a, you know a knock that prevented him from competing in the in the relay. In the relay, which I think is fairly sensible because I mean it doesn't have to be a serious injury, but you get one on the knee or something, and uh, you know you could sort of jeopardise the, the whole team's successes uh, chances. So was the was the Alexander Post hockey team and the speed team quite a close knit fraternity? Was many of the um, hockey players were ex speed skaters. Um, I mean, I've got this theory: there are three types of, of sportsmen. There are um, people that are racers. I mean, whatever sport it is, there are people that are team players. You know, they see the angles and everything. 
and they've got there are a few gifted few that do both. Um, you know, you can do a, do a decent uh, turn speed, whatever sport, and also can they've got um, spatial awareness for for their um, team stuff. But quite a few of the um, hockey players. I mean, I don't think the Newbury brothers did speed, um, but Dan Howard turns up in playing for the second team. Arthur Arthur, Arthur Rowley was a speed skater. Uh, Sid Crow, their goalkeeper, was a speed skater at one stage. There's quite a lot of them. You know, they 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 they, they, they moved on I, either because they were no good at speed skating or limited at speed skating, or old age began to pick up mm. on them, or they liked the camaraderie of uh, of being in a team. All these sort of things into mix, and I think uh, that's where you know that's what happened. Do people tend to go from speed to hockey and not the other way around? I think it was virtually. I think it's virtually always speed to hockey. I think give speed a whack. Um, if you're any good at it, you might stick to it. Some people did really did stick to it, and that was it. But um, I think mean, Bill Ross never really did any hockey that I'm aware of. Um, I don't think many hockey players went to, to speed. Not in the Palace Club. Um, places like Rochester might be different. Yeah, and um, I think. Um, um, I think Waters of Home Bay, I mm. think, that, uh, probably the other way, yeah, that way around, but by and large, I think in Palace it was tended to be that um, a uh, speed skater would um, either stick with speed skating or would, you know, find his vocation in hockey or old age, you know, in inverted commas, I mean, getting to your 30s, you might move on to, to, to hockey. What, so what drew your to hockey? Because it was there. Um, he actually cobbled up in the late 20s a team of speed skaters roller, yeah, to play roller hockey. And they played at the Orford Club, which was um, one of the, it was a declining club, but it was one of the clubs that was very good either side of the First World War. And he said the only thing, the reason we didn't beat them, because we didn't know how to beat the goalkeeper. But he had five, five, five or six guys playing roller hockey against a, a sort of a veteran team of um, and he was dead keen. I mean he was um, always trying to get into the, the hockey team and eventually got in and won the hockey prevail player that previously played in his position had an you know, ankle ankle injury at work. And then on it was about thirty years of roller hockey. So even in the in his early days of speed he was he was still yeah. playing the odd game or, or well, it, it got an interest? He was hankering after it, yeah. Really? I'm sure of it. I mean, in fact, he cobbled up a team out of speed skaters. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah. something. Um, yeah. So he was, so you said, in, 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 so when did he really, when did he really make that transition? It was gradual, but it probably mid-30, 1935, 36. But 1937, he actually represented England at um, roller hockey in Europeans, they won it. Um, uh, 1938, they won the Kent League, which is the main, the principal league of the in the country, the, the, the most the senior league. I think in that sort of period, 30, you know, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, he was moving towards hockey, and mm -hmm. of course the war actually brought the speed to a shuddering halt. And after the war, of course, it was back to hockey only. Um, so. On the so just going back to to so the mid thirties so we we went we said about Stuttgart and the, the the European Speed Championships and 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 the likes of Ross and uh, and Wilkinson and and Jimmy Reed um, were out there but so did your dad did he did he try out for the for, for that team or was he by then had he done that transition where he wasn't that fussed or I think he was considered for the England team in the Wembley. Thirty eight. Thirty eight. And I think he was I think he was selected and he said, Can I do both? He was also selected for England at the same event. The hockey. And they said no, so he said, I'll do hockey. Um, uh, okay. um, that's yeah, that's one that's um, on the uh, it was the Empire Pool, wasn't it, Wembley? Um, yeah, the Empire yeah, the pool, the Empire Pool, yeah. So thirty eight was his last 
speed medal, or, or as I, I when I say speed medal, I, I, it was a championship medal in the relay yeah. in '38. Um, but um, so, but I'm not even sure if there was a championship 12 months on from from that. Um, so, but it, so he took place in the hockey event in London in Wembley, did he? Yeah, he did. How did they do? Um, I can't get this right. Um, I think it might have been. I think it might have been North East South actually, rather than England. Um, I'm not absolutely sure. Um, sorry, I'm taking this off the top of my head. Um, I think they won, but uh, they chose. They chose to do the hockey anyway. Yeah, because it was. I know in the program it's billed as a, a European Championship, and yet if you look in later life, it's classed as a world, certainly from a speed perspective, it's, it's a World Championships. Don't quite know where the transition from European to to World came, and why? Because it was only European countries at that time that that, that took part. Um, did he fall out of love with speed skating? I don't think so. I think he just. Um, hang on. Bear in mind, he started when he was twenty three. Mm -hmm. Bear in mind his last roller hockey uh, international he was in mid forties. Um, he was getting. He was thirty five in nineteen forty. Right, yeah, thirty five. Um, oh, yeah. The war would have killed him off anyway. Yeah. I mean, he was still doing speed skating immediately before the war. I think there's a. Um, I've seen a photograph of him that um, I think Coventry, thirty eight, yeah. thirty nine time. You know, I don't know what he did, uh, what the outcome was, but um, the war certainly put a drew and uh, stopped it. Because right. after the war, he was now mid years mid forties. So tell me about the war. So what did he do in the war? The war was um, initially, I mean, like everybody else, he was um, registered in nineteen thirty nine. Complete sort of almost a census, and um, and then you were called up, and he was. Um, Called up in I think 1940. Um, he went through some sort of selection process, and they passed him A1 for the Navy. They asked him what he wants. Uh, they asked him um, what he would like to do. And they, you know, it was a choice in this thing. So, um, he said, "What are you short of?" And they said, "Stokers." I'll be a stoker, which I think could be a death sentence actually, but um, he wouldn't have known that. Um, but then the, the civil or civilian authorities required him to go and patch up, uh, or try and keep uh, Hackney roofs intact. You know, so he, had, he ended up managing about forty guys, all of whom were elderly or disabled. He was the only able-bodied person amongst them, um, and they um, spent every every single day of the week. I mean, there was no holiday. You just mm -hmm. you worked dawn to dusk. Monday, Sunday, Monday, Sunday, Monday, Sunday, and on it went. You know, there was no, no there was no break in it. Um, then they patched places up so they could sort of, sort of be lifted. Is that through his, because of his building skills? Yeah, he was a builder. That's why he was down in the nineteen thirty-eight and uh, thirty-nine uh, register. He was down as a builder. Um, there's an interesting story that he, they, they, he and his sort of superannuated gang were had patched up some houses, and the. The Royal Engineers have been put to work on the other side of the road, and they come. To a senior, uh, senior officer comes along. The um, engineers had done the you know, whole row of houses. The civilians had only done about half of them. They've got a swagger stick, you know. To see what could be done over there. Eventually, my dad said, "Go and look round the back," because he had a, all these old, old guys behind him <laughs> grinning, like they knew what was coming. And the, the army just on the front, <laughs> so that they could impress the officer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think he'd have said anything if it hadn't been, you know, hmm. been given a harangue, you know. Um, <laughs> but those are old blokes sort of cheering him on, you know. Well, the fact that he was, um, the fact that he was, it was homebound then, sort of, yeah, for for the duration of the, of the war, I would suggest. Is that did that still allow him to, to skate? I mean, I don't know. I think in, skating stopped in, in its entirety. Well, they they used the I facilities. I don't think he did anything on skates. He came back to skating post-war. Uh, my his, my mum um, heard 
there was something on a radio about the skating event up at the palace. She said to him, why don't you have it, give it another go? And he went up there and tossed it around a bit and back, back to hockey, but not to speed. Um, so it would have been 40 when the war finished then, so yeah. Okay. So you never you never thought about going back to speed skates then? I don't think so, no. Um, I think it's just, you know, you know the age would have caught up in the genre a bit by. I mean, there are quite a few decent old speed skates there. Mm -hmm. um, I can think of um, Charlie Bush. Okay. Yeah, 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 Charlie Bush. Hartigan was. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Bobby Alfred. Bobby Halford yeah. actually played a lot of hockey. In I saw in, that, yeah, in, too. In the summer. Yeah, yeah. Um, I saw that. I think he did it for fun, for fun to do, you know, rather than. So I suppose being 40 now and, and uh, the hockey, I wouldn't say it was easy, but, but in terms of, I suppose, you, age was less of a limiting factor in hockey than it was in speed, would you say? Is that, is that I true? I imagine so. Um, um, there were quite a few, I mean, I played up until I was in my 70s. Really? Yeah. Wow. Um, and uh, I found I was, you know, I still managed a reasonable sprint up the rink if I yeah, wanted to, yeah. yeah, if I had to. Um, um, you make up for lack of whatever by a guy, or sometimes, you know, give somebody a shove, you know. Yeah, 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 you know, yeah, just went to, <laughs> went to put the elbow in. Yeah. So, so, he was in the England team for hockey, before the war and after it, yeah. uh, and after it. So, so how did he? So he got back into hockey. Tell me more about his his, his exploits then after the war and, and what sort of achievements. Well, after the war, um, he was, he was a first team Palace player from 40, 1946, the year I was born, through to nineteen fifty seven fifty eight. Um, last game actually he was um, he was announced. And the Palace were losing, and he dribbled the entire opposing team and scored. I mean, that was his last. That was his. They called him back occasionally to. I mean, he used to take wander up there and train, um, um, often with me. Um, and occasionally, was drafted in to fill a hole. You know, um, but he played for the Palace first team right through to about 1960. Strangely, he played in the Palace second team with Wilkie. Wilkinson, and they almost got to the semi final of the Cat National Cup. They played against Liverpool, they were leading 2 0. Unfortunately, Liverpool equalised and they went out 4 2 on hmm. after extra time. But um, played a lot of summer hockey um, based on Victoria Park, um, uh, under the Victoria Park label. Um, they used to massacre the teams from Essex. I mean, bearing in mind that the Palace teams were detuned, they didn't put play out, they didn't put out a full full first team. They had two first team players in each of their three teams, you know, second team players and third team players. So they were fairly weak, mm -hmm. but they, the opposition wasn't very up to much. But he played in Harwich and Harwich, Yarmouth, Norwich, various Netherlands, Ipswich, you know, all over South End. So it was still quite a big part of his life then? It was, yeah, right to the end. Um, in fact, he was, um, the week before he died, he, he was up with me at uh, the palace. I mean, uh, um, he took me up there. And uh, I think it wouldn't take much to escape back on just to, yeah, pay did, out the train. Did you ever, did you ever compete with him? say compete with him, you know, did, you, did your careers, hockey careers overlap at any oh, point? Not really. Um, Never played the same team. Um, I wasn't good enough, and he was on his way out anyway. But yeah, in terms of age, um, I mean, we're talking just nudging sixty. Time. Yeah, because I think so, I, I, the reason I ask is because I mean, I was when I was born, my dad was eighteen, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so we were very, you know, he was like an older brother more than a, uh, you know, a, my father, uh, and so our careers. Yeah. Uh, skate, certainly domestic skating careers overlapped, so we, we, we skated relays together and raced together and, and his, last, his last international um, call up for Britain was in 1987 yeah. and my first was 1988, so I missed out, you know, but I think that's... It's a bit like Owen Farrell and his dad. Yeah, 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 it is a bit like, I mean, I, I'm not quite sure if I was to say to somebody like, you know, that, that I'm like Owen Farrell, I don't think people... <laughs> You can't kick a goal, can you? <laughs> but, um, 
So it, so did he? So in forty five, so he skated for Paris. But was he skating internationally? Sorry, as well. In, in when after the war, did he skate for Britain again? He skated because he did to forty nine, didn't he? Yeah, in nineteen forty nine. But he played. There were tours of. Um, he played in Belgium. Um, about fourth um, Antwerp, I think, three years running. Um, and then. Uh, one year in Knocker, then I think two years in the Ruhr, Germany. The last foreign uh, adventure was in 1956, I think, um, in the ne uh, Netherlands. Um, in fact, he did one before the war. They, the Palace team went to Antwerp in 1930, just about three months before the war started. Mm -hmm. um, and. Uh, Beat the Belgian champions, the first foreign team that have beaten the Belgian champions. But uh, there's five guys in one car craned onto the boat. Yeah, but it didn't they roll, roll on, roll off in those mm -hmm. days. Craned onto the boat, drove to Antwerp, played, I think, a couple of games against um, was Klopp Stock here, was the name of the, of the uh, club, and then back again. But yeah. Entertained in the uh, Grand Place, the uh, um, town hall with the British consul. It makes me wonder whether there's a sort of a hearts and minds hmm. politically going on, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To get sort of, sort of get mates in Europe before all hell breaks loose, you know. Hmm. I actually went back there. The, 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 um, the rink seems to have gone, so does the, uh, the, the place they stayed at. It seems to be a CNA now. Um, <laughs> uh, but um, you know, it's a, it was a, it was a broader lot, sometimes more than once a year. You know. But this was for a club level rather than mm, international. International level. Yeah. Am I right in saying Stomke is a German name? Yeah. Uh, did that have any bearing during the war? It was there was a right First World War. Um, my grandfather, I, I might never knew because he died before I was born, mm -hmm. but spent a lot of time trying to persuade the school schoolmaster that um, not that it was a Dutch name <laughs> because my dad's older brother one of his older brothers had been bullied. I mean dad would never have been bullied. Yeah. Um, I mean he fancied himself as a boxer. Um, mm. and if you've uh, caught scrapping in the street apparently once um, with a, an, another older boy and his mum comes up yeah you know come off you know and the one of the, the, the there's a group of guys watching it. And one of them said, don't be too hard on him, Mrs. The Empire Needs Boys like him. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yes, it was a bit difficult um, for him. I mean, not for him, though. I don't think he'd have, anyone would have messed with him. Messed with him, no. Because yeah, it, it was big. It was, a, it was quite he a, was a, a big. He was the same height as me. Yeah, big Slightly light. heavier, not yeah. much, but we're roughly the same. Yeah. Um, could be. I mean, I wouldn't say it's aggressive. It never was normally. Yeah. Um, but um, obviously it could be. I mean, yeah, yeah. you're not going to be a top sportsman without yeah. uh, aggression. Um, um, you know, he didn't, uh, I don't think he would have suffered anything like that. Yeah. Um, I think also, that I, that my grandfather probably would have known we had a German origin, it, it sort of got lost, and for me it's dug it up. Um, okay. We're going back now and finding where we came from and all this sort of stuff. but. Uh, so it wasn't really a problem in the war, and said that they didn't really. The Second World War, I don't think it was at all. Even. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, tell me about the so the, the George Lord thing. You go back. So in '49, they went to Lisbon, didn't they? Because I know that they, they skated yeah, in Lisbon yeah. at the World Championship. Yeah. But he did the hockey. But so, what was the story about he wouldn't go on the plane with George Lord? Well, my dad was um, taken ill. Um, they'd eaten something that. Um, disagreed with him. There's another player as well, another England player. So the, oh, the England team had to play with a depleted, just about, yeah, put the put the right number of players on the rink. But that's about it. Um, he was ill, and um, the story goes that um, they wanted to eat something, but they, they wanted something that would make them sick. But rather, I think uh, oddly, they chose boiled eggs were all right. But I thought to myself, well, salmonella. I didn't think of that, did you? But um, anyway. He was yeah, washed out, and the um, somebody from NSA, rather than the RHA, said, "Well, we've got a spare seat going back with George." <laughs> Don't want you know. Um, 
I think there, there would be two reasons. One, he didn't want to sit next to George Lord for two or three hours. And two was he probably would have preferred to gone back with his mates That's anyway. anyway. Yeah, um, <laughs> but he, would, he refused to go. Um, <laughs> refused a free seat and a free journey home. Um, so when did, his, when did his skating career finish? The week before he died. Um, really? 19, well, he was still around and, um, I mean, 1964, I'd say. Um, so was it quite sudden, his death? Was it unexpected? Or? It was a heart attack. Um, oh, aneurysm, actually. Okay. Not, a, not a heart attack, yeah, yeah. I'd say. It's so a, it was a real shock then, wasn't it? Well, it, it wasn't he went to work and didn't come back. Um, really? And uh, he, uh, I, think was, I think, 1964, I think, he did mm. play one. He, he was a stand on reserve against for Palace team, against England. England were having a warm up game. And they put on a match up at the palace. They didn't actually play, but it was there in case anyone. Yeah, Thirtieth of November, nineteen sixty-four. But I think he's yeah. he's dead. Uh, uh, yeah, so it was only um, a week or so ago. Yeah, my ancestry uh, membership suddenly reminded me of that, which I thought. Was I I, I, I did a I, me being me. I, I just I, I looked it up yesterday, funny yeah. enough, and um, yeah. just you know because I I didn't know. You know, because uh, uh, he was so he was only fifty nine, which obviously struck a bit of a chord. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm fifty six next birthday, yeah. so. Yeah. But um, but it, it's interesting. So so he was still skating right up until it. it, it yeah, I've been mean, sort of, almost casually, but occasionally would um, turn up for. I mean, he, the last first proper first team appearance. Mm -hmm. He uh, they both Palace's goalkeepers were out of action. And he stood stood in goal. I mean, uh, at Herne Bay. Um, Probably a year or two earlier. I was there actually, I'm watching. Um, I was in reserve on the side, um, and yeah, Palace managed to win it. But um, I remember the ball running loose towards the goal, and he just sculled out of the goal, picked the ball up on his stick, and dropped it over the over the side. And <laughs> and, it, and it's a change of room afterwards. And if it, if Ken Ken going on the other team had got it, he'd have scored. So I thought I'd get rid of him. <laughs> he just, you know, mm. and um, <laughs> there was no defender present, you know, and he just got, just got rid of the goal. Very little ball. I think I'd have put it around the back of the net actually if I knew me. Yeah. But, um, was he very really supportive of you in your? Yeah. Uh, he just introduced me to it, and I didn't, I, I didn't really get going. Mm. I mean, I'm, I wasn't that good at, uh, at that sort of age. Um, sort of, my best hockey was playing. Well, in my twenties, thirties, and even in my fifties and sixties. Right. Oddly. Uh, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Was it? Was you conscious about following your father's footsteps? Not really, I didn't feel overawed by it. I mean, it's just you know, occasionally it would come up, and somebody said, you know, um, I was playing in a well, twenty years ago now, but uh, we we won the uh, Eastern Counties Third Division. There was the Fourth Division as well. Um, and um, I remember the change of them afterwards, just a guy from Herne Bay sort of talked about, um, you know, who's David played? And I said, well, my name, and said, who is it? I told him, he said, oh, we still talk about him today. You know, um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Didn't, didn't elaborate, but. <laughs> yeah, 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 but it, you know, it, it's, 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 it's nice that, uh, that, you know, that somebody does remember that and, and appreciates what he did. So, would you say that, um, there was a skater or a, or even a hockey player that he considered to be the best. Somebody, somebody that he always looked up to is not perhaps the right phraseology, but certainly somebody who you know, he wanted to beat. Or was it... I'd say he mentioned about three or four skaters. He, he really did um, take to in terms of their skating. Mm -hmm. um, one was Marcel Merz of Antwerp. Yeah, yeah. He thought he was a cracking skater. Mm -hmm. um, um, I think the, the most going to the other extreme, uh, Vi Kirby, who mm. thought he was a brilliant, I think as a lady skater, a yeah. skater. And uh, Dennis Hill and, uh, and uh, MacDonald, you know. Don uh, Brown, uh, yeah. Don Brown, sorry. Yeah, Don, yeah, yeah. That is, his real name's David, actually, but yeah, but Don McDonald Brown, yeah. yeah and uh, they, uh, quite, quite a lot of them, having watched them, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I always remember, I met Maureen Stewart, once more in hill i should say mm -hmm. and uh and 
I, 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 I I've probably seen it before, but I only remember speaking to her once, and it was it would have been about 2003 in Chatham, and she mm. came to an event mm. um, with Dennis. And uh, I said, yeah, I know Dennis. I said, I know he was a, a good skater. And she said, he was the best. <laughs> he was extremely young when he started. He was I very think. young when he started. Young Dennis, yeah. I think it was um, early teens. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he, he probably was, started I, speed skating yeah. 10 years younger than my dad did. I think he was the, the youngest at the time winner of the uh, the Mall Championship. Mm -hmm. I think he was only 17, I think, when he won it. Uh, but, uh, but yeah... Um, as I said, is that I, I met Dennis uh, again some years ago, and it was interesting to to listen to the. Yeah, I, I had the a story. conversation with Maureen on the phone. Um, oh, must be best part twenty years ago, and the same subject came up, and I said, "I don't thought the world of her, world of her husband, you know." Yeah, 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 yeah. And she sort of said to me, "I tell him." Yeah. Yeah, yeah. She was. I, she, I mean, she absolutely did idolise Dennis, and I think. And I think it was mutual. I know that, mm -hmm. that when Maureen passed away, I think Dennis it, it hit him quite hard. Mm. Um, so I see uh, you've still got all your dad's medals, yeah. and they're all very neatly, you know, pocketed in a in a book, an album, yeah, and an album. Um, do you have anything like his race shirts or his skates? Or I haven't got race shirts. Haven't got skates. No. Um, some of his skates were cannibalised into mine uh, mm -hmm. years ago. No, I haven't got any race shirts. Um, I mean, sweater would have got. I mean, the last one of those would have been 1939. So yeah, of course, yeah. Some time ago. Yeah. Well, yeah. well, uh, I mean, it, it's been a, a, a great insight. I know you, you wrote some notes earlier as well. You said there was a few things that that, that was on there. I can't remember. Okay. Yeah, right. yeah. Think, you were gonna uh, share with me. I'll share these with you. Um, stop me if I get too carried away. No. Um, there was some. Um, suggestion by I think it was um, uh, Sid Cole, who was the ma general manager of Angel of the Palace and, and the former speed skating champion himself. He was, yeah, yeah, Southern Kings, yeah, 1912. Um, yeah. Um, laying a track in the Great Hall at Alexander Palace, which would have been considerably you know, a lot larger than the Palace rink itself. I mean, they, not pillars in the thing, but you could obviously work your way around those and hope no one, you know, collides with one. Um, but it, it never came to anything. I, would, I think it was on, on account of the, the Palace Club generally, all the three, my dad, um, Jimmy Reed and uh, Bill Ross had a crack at British Records in there. Um, there was um, a couple of times when uh, professionalism came up. Um, my dad was challenged by um, get this one by um, Benny. Uh, yeah, not Benny. Uh, Benny Lee. Benny Lee. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he throws up Benny. Lee. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I um, remember Dad was, was was inclined to accept it on an amateur versus professional basis if NSA would swallow it. Um, Hill wouldn't. Uh, like Lee wouldn't uh, aware that. Mm. Um, so it never happened. Um, I think Lee was past his best by then, anyway. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. was, a, he was a, a real early skater. Yeah, in the 20s, yeah. yeah. Um, then, of course, there was the um, Rollers, um, Roller Derby, just before the first, the Second World War. Um, the dead game was offered, um, I think it was offered about five quid a week or something, mm -hmm. which was, um, they declined it. Um, it would have wrecked his, uh, put an end to his skating career as an amateur. Yeah. Um, so I think that's what happened to Jimmy Reed. Yeah. He he took on the he speedway. Took it, he yeah. took it. Yeah. And and took on uh, the name Bulldog. And so did uh, uh, Wilkie. Wilkie yeah, I don't recall him doing. I didn't know that until you said. Well, that he only, yeah. he could only skate after war, hockey that is, because he was, he was on, on license. Okay. And I don't quite sure what that means, but mm -hmm. I think it was some, some recognition that he was a professional. But that he could do the, he could the do that, and you mustn't take any more money, you know. Um, I think that's really, yeah. that's really it, really. I mean, well, from this. well, look, Jeff, I, I just want to say, first of all, I want to say thank you um, for at least taking time out to, to sit with me and, and educate me, and certainly on the whys and wherefores of, of, of your father. Um, certainly, and me being the, 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 the obsessive I am. Yeah. 
on all things speed skating. Um, it's certainly a name that I'm all too familiar with. Mm. Even I'm, I'm familiar with the name, although I'm not familiar with the person. Mm. Um, you know, and I've seen newspaper cuttings and and obviously the historical records. So it's always nice mm. to know, or to certainly know somebody who knew the person. Certainly from like, you know the 1930s and that. Um, and uh, so yeah, and and from from what I see, I think you you've got a, as much obsession as m as me in certain certain things of, of all things records and historical facts and figures. But for me, I, on a personal basis, as I said, I just want to say uh, thanks again and uh, and uh, and cheers to your dad. He was uh, he was obviously uh, very talented and and well done. So thank you. Thank you.